Well, thank you all for coming, and I'm delighted to um, make three announcements today. Once I've done these, I would like to pick up on some of the issues from yesterday. I would ask that you keep any questions until the end. I have alongside me the Minister for Health, and he was touched that the um, thoughts from the media that he wasn't there on the concerns, but here he is alive and kicking. And importantly today, we have been joined by two colleagues who are working in our first-rate healthcare team. Dr. Rizwan Khan, who is our consultant microbiologist and the Director of Infection Prevention and Control, and Dr. Gregor Peden, who is our Chief Clinical Information Officer. Now, I mentioned yesterday that we would be making a change in the scale of our testing. I am able to confirm today that we are now able to do so. This is an addition to what was already taking place. The Minister will take us through some of the detail of this in a second, but I do need to make two points of my own. We are operating under significant constraints in terms of the number that we can test and process. And I need to be frank, we are not able to test as many people as we would ideally like to. But we are prioritising and we are taking our lead from clinical experts. We have had reports of abusive behaviour towards our healthcare professionals from people who feel they should be tested. This will not be tolerated. Our doctors, nurses and other healthcare staff have a right to work without fear of abuse. David, would you like to take us through the situation regarding testing? Thank you, Chief Minister. From tomorrow, there will be a mobile testing unit available for people to attend. These are people who have been directed there by the 111 service, which the Chief Minister will speak more about in a moment. In relation to that, those people will be people who are presenting symptoms. It is important for me to stress that the only route to be tested is via that 111 service. This is not a mobile unit where people can simply turn up to be tested. They will not, that will not be allowed. It is purely people displaying symptoms who meet the criteria that will be sent there. The other thing I want to state is that we will be, we will be processing roughly 30 tests a day from here on in. Um, I know there's been comments around the fact the island has only so far done 50 tests, but as I have stated previously, that was in line with the criteria that was being applied at the time in line with Public Health England. We, are, we have also processed about 100 other tests over the last few days that we are awaiting the results of. And with that, I'll hand back to the Chief Minister. OK, thank you, David. I am also able to announce that from 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, so Friday morning, we will have an Isle of Man specific COVID 111 telephone system in place and operational. This is more than a hotline, it is more than a call centre. This is a robust system based on the one used in the United Kingdom and draws on clinical expertise. I am grateful to the DHSC team, including Gregor here, for having set this up so quickly. Now, before I hand over to the Minister on this, I would like to make an important point. This phone line is only for those requiring advice in relation to COVID-19. People with any other medical concerns should contact the relevant services in the normal way. Now, we do, of course, expect huge demand from the launch. So those of you who are online can help us by doing the online questionnaire that from tomorrow can be accessed through gov.im forward slash coronavirus. This will help you decide before you call if the COVID 111 line is right for you. COVID 111 will let people who call know where they are in the queue. Can I please ask people to only call it if they have pressing concerns about their health or the health of a loved one? Please consult the information on our website first. We want to ensure that those who need the service most are able to get through in a reasonable time. Again, over to you, David, to expand on that. So the new 111 line is a new innovation, really, for the island. It will allow people to be triaged very quickly and also directed where they need to be if they need to be directed to mobile testing or be able to give them reassurance that at that stage there is no need for testing. 
Um, it will be staffed by clinicians, so there will be medical people there to be able to go through the various different pathways. I need to stress and echo the comments of the Chief Minister that we would urge people to use the online um, triage system to fill in the form, have a check and see if the line is appropriate for you. And also stress again, this phone line is purely for those concerned about COVID-19. It is not to do with any other kind of medical issue. The people should report all the medical issues in exactly the same way as they do now. Okay, thank you, David. Now I'm going to discuss my third item is new powers, which I did discuss yesterday. So as I mentioned yesterday, we have now put in place new powers. This morning, the Lieutenant Governor and Council made the necessary regulations. What this means is that the police now have the powers they need to keep people safe and protect the most vulnerable members of our community and the sanctions available to the court in relation to a breach of self-isolation are significant, up to £10,000. In exceptional circumstances, courts will be able to award custodial sentences. I hope that people will do the right thing and respect the measures that we have put in place to reduce the spread of COVID-19. I also hope and expect that the community will pull together to support the police in their work. So moving on to issues from yesterday, I think we came across schools. As expected, the UK Prime Minister did announce last night that schools in England would close from the end of this week. This means that all schools across the United Kingdom will now be closed. The Prime Minister did make the point that there would be arrangements in place for key workers. He also acknowledged that there would be impact on exams due to the end of the school year, or due at the end of the school year. Now, as I've said on a number of, of occasions, the situation is fast and fluid. We need to make the right decisions at the right time. We do not judge that it is the right time to close schools. We have carefully considered the advice from our experts and the impact that this would have on our society. Now, this may, of course, change quickly. We will keep you informed. Now, David, could you take the point from yesterday about frontline staff? Yes, there were several uh, questions asked um, in relation to frontline staff yesterday, particularly around pregnant nurses and pregnant teachers. Taking the pregnant nurses first, um, within DHSC we have a number of vacancies. I think with many of you sat here today in the press, I've done interviews about the vacancies we have, and we will actually look to redeploy nurses that we believe may be at risk so getting them away from necessarily the front line roles they might be sat in now so any pregnant nurses will actually have the job that they're doing now risk assessed and where necessary we will redeploy them in relation to teachers um, there will be similar conversations going on in education particularly around classroom teachers um, who are obviously exposed to groups of children they are, we were advising pregnant teachers to have a conversation with their line manager and where appropriate we will look to redeploy them as well. Okay, well thank you very much David. I'll now take questions and I think Paul you put your hands up first. Uh, back to you uh, Minister, I'm glad you're well by the way. Um, can you take me through this? You're going to do 30 tests a day. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many have you done? Previously, because today it hasn't gone up, looking at your thing, it's saying 50 tests has been there all day long. So there's no tests, 30 tests. And, well, okay, and just to finish it off, who are those 30 people that, I mean, is that just a, a random number you've got there? It could be 100 people that want to be tested, or, or how are you going to you know, allocate those 30 slots? It will be a minimum of 30 tests a day, assuming the demand is there. Um, one thing I do need to point out is the 50 that is displayed on the website is 50 test results back. As I said just slightly earlier in the press briefing, we've actually there's 100 in to, you know 100 tests, and we're awaiting results back on some of those tests. So it's not a case of we've only done 50 tests. Um, in relation to the mobile testing, they will be triaged via the 111 service and be directed to the mobile testing unit um, for testing. The UK yesterday ramped up their testing, which I'm sure people have heard. To put that into context, that would be the equivalent of doing six tests in the Isle of Man. So we're moving substantially ahead of where the UK is in terms of testing. And can I just uh, can I just say, Paul, I, I watched the press conference yesterday, and it was it was wonderful that you were so concerned about my well-being. It's nice to know there's someone out there who is. Okay, Tim. 
Yeah, um, we tried to uh, ascertain from the communications team as to whether the Director of Public Health is back on the island and whether they're in self-isolation. We didn't get an answer. We're asking that on behalf of the public who we serve who are asking that question. Uh, so is the Director of Public Health back from holiday? Is she in self-isolation if she is? And who and why did she get permission to go away in the first place at a time of a massive public health story? The Director of Public Health is back on Ireland. She was on leave. She is in self-isolation, but she is working as normal. I have had numerous contact with her today over various topics. Um, in terms of approval for leave, members of staff are entitled to leave, and at the time and at the time that it actually uh, the leave occurred, the situation was very, very different to him. As you know, this has been a very fast-moving situation, and the advice we were seeking changed on Monday. So we were all here, you were all here for the press conference on Monday, and that's when things changed, when she was already in the UK, and at that point could not get back. Can I also add to that? I think th th we're not in this for a few weeks. This is yeah. a long haul. And if I, I think so, if I said to you, Tim, you can't go on holiday now at Manx Radio for the next 10 months, I think you're going to tell me I'm not prepared to do that. It's due uh, away on Sunday. I'm not uh, going. Well, I, and I've cancelled numerous stuff, but we cannot expect all our frontline staff to not go on holiday for the next year or so. You, you know, we've got to be sensible about this. So I, I think we've got to be unreasonable. I expect people to be reasonable about staff taking time off. They are entitled to that, and we have to respect that. Um, so I think, Mark, did you want to come in? Thank you, Chief Minister. Mark from NCTV. I just want to pick something up on what you said about the, uh, obviously the new powers in place. I mean, we've been hearing a lot about, I mean, also down at the ports, people have been handing out leaflets. I mean... Is leaflets enough? Does, is there, does there need to be more you know, information out to the public? Because people are still confused about what is going on and is leaflets really enough? Well, people are getting talked to by civil defence at the, um, the port and our own team, external relations team, our immigration team at the airport. So they're getting told also, um, we hope that the airline companies will on the tannoys be announcing it. Um, and on the boat, it will be getting announced. So I think enough is being said. I, I, you know, I'm told that people are being told you must go straight home. And if people are, I mean, some of the stupid questions I've heard being asked by members of the public who get this are, can I go to the shops on the way home to get some food? Well, no. When you get told that you must go straight home, you go straight from the boat or from the plane home. And if people are breaking this, we have now got the powers for up to £10,000 fine and up to three months in prison for people who are being unreasonable. But I do not expect and I sincerely hope that we do not not to have, we don't have to use any of these powers, but they are there and they will be used if people break this rule. David, would you like to expand yes. on that? Yes, in terms of self-isolation, it's a pretty simple message. If you are coming into the Isle of Man, be that a local returning or a visitor, you need to self-isolate for 14 days. And what that means is you stay at home. You go straight from the port into self-isolation. You can't get the message more simpler than that. Okay, young lady from newspapers. It's Jess Wars. Hi, Jess. So, actually, keeping to that topic, I'm wondering uh, what controls are in place for visiting vessels and for private planes? So, in relation to private planes, if the person is not landing on their own home, so, in other words, actually getting off the plane and directly into their own home, then they will be checked exactly the same as anyone else. So, they need to, exactly as someone coming into the port, they will actually need to go through and then actually get transport to their house and stay there. Um, in relation to checking um, at the ports, they are taking details of people coming off the vessels uh, in order that we have got a log as to who is actually needing to go into a self-isolation. Okay, Ron, you were next. Chief Minister, I just wanted to ask you about um, the exam process. Has any thought been given to what is going to happen with uh, students taking exams? Well, that's being currently looked at because obviously the UK only announced it yesterday. The Minister for Education, Sport and Culture will be giving you a press conference update. I think it's on Sunday. I think he's, he's down for. So we will hope to be able to give you as much information as possible at that time. Right, next we had Tim. 
Yeah, just uh, one from a, a listener uh, said that her husband was tested at A&E on Tuesday. Uh, they were told that the whole household would have to self-isolate uh, uh, until the results were available. Uh, he was also told they would only contact him if the result was positive. Um, so the question was, how are we meant to guess if we've not heard anything by tomorrow and s assume we're OK? In a moment, I'll bring Rizwan, um, if, I, and if I may. But first of all, the, uh, yes, they would be all asked to self-isolate because if he's been tested, then I assume he was showing symptoms if mm -hmm. he presented at A&A. &E. Rizwan, do you want to come in on that? Yes, um, the 50 tests that we've done so far, all negative, thankfully, I have personally found each one of the, uh, you know, the, the potential cases uh, to the uh, houses, informing them of the negative result. Now, when as the number of tests increase, and now we have NHS 111 uh, one on, um, the, you know, functional, we will have a system in place where it would be recorded, and then uh, it will be on GP, um, uh, you know, for, or, or on their information, and then. Uh, uh, I think they, it's on NHS. It will be available on NHS 111 yes. as well. Yeah. So yes. that's how. So the when when the new 111 service launches, um, that will be the only way in which patients will be directed for testing, and 111 service will be responsible for then informing patients of that test result. Yeah. Okay, Chris, you're next. Yeah, it's a couple of, uh, sort of supplementary questions to that. Uh, I'm sure we had a call from somebody who works in a government office on the island who said that a couple came in having just flown in from Spain asking how to get Manx citizenship. They weren't stopped at the airport or anything. They didn't know about the quarantine isolation situation at all, so it kind of feeds back to the question about leaflets. Do you think a verbal, somebody standing there actually stopping people, uh, would be a better solution to that? And in addition, sort of uh, tying off the back of that, there was a case on social media yesterday of somebody in Castletown on the island saying, I picked my parents up from the boat earlier and here we are in a pub having a meal. I'm not taking any notice of this isolation uh, thing. That surely just shows the system isn't working. Well, on the latter one, before I hand over to David, Chris, if you can send me the links for that, for, for that person, I will they have, have been deleted, since, but we have a stream capture. Well, if you have a stream capture, if you send us a link, and we will um, deal with it. David, do you want to yeah, answer on that? In relation to the airports, as far as I'm aware, they are being contacted individually by people are getting, not just getting the leaflets, but are being spoken to individually. Um, so that is going on in relation to the two Spanish people. Of course, what we don't know is, well, although they might say they've just been on Ireland, we don't know if that was before or after. Uh, where some people say they're just on Ireland and they could mean they've been here about four or five days. So, for instance, I've had several um, people pointing to posts to me on social media saying, how is this person walking around? And when it's actually been looked at, they've been in the Ireland, when they say, several days since last week. In addition to the microphone, a second. Off the back of that, then, how is this system of your uh, sort of social policing people reporting to you going to work because it's going to make it impossible you're going to be chasing your own tail the whole time well like i say we are taking details of people coming through the ports as well so we know who should be self-isolating so there will be a list to compare that to yeah. so, hi it's josh dag side tv um just wants to ask going back to schools really um obviously the uk have now decided to to close the schools there um, and you said you're not willing to do that at this point i'm wondering have you got an idea of what point you would close the schools? Is there anything that you're waiting to happen and then go, right, that's the time where we will start considering closing schools? Right. David, do you want to take on that? Right? Yes, in relation, yeah. in, rela in relation to schools, um, that would be a decision made at the point we have confirmed cases. Um, the, main, the main determinant of that would be human-to-human -human transmission, because if you've got starting to get human-to-human -human transmission throughout the community, then obviously that causes a greater risk in those environments. But we've got to remember that one of the reasons the UK made the decision to close the schools isn't necessarily just around the public safety issue, it's around the staffing issue because they've been seeing more and more of their staff in schools having to self-isolate, having to go off work, and it's been causing pressures as to whether they could have realistically kept those schools open as well. So it's not just on that dessert point that the UK has made the decision they have. Okay, Paul, you're next. Um, for all of you, and it's two-parter, do you believe the virus is on the Isle of Man, first of all? Can I ask you all... 
do you think it's here? Well, can I, oh, can well, I, yeah. answer, can I sure. answer that first, Paul? Sure. Yeah. I will restate what I stated in the press conference the other day, which is there is no guarantee it's not. I, yeah. We've had no confirmed cases. Um, if it had been around for a while, by sheer law of average, we would have expected someone to present in a, you know, in, a, in a more critical condition that would have been identified at hospital. But we can never say never because it is not physically possible to test at one point in time everyone on this island. Okay. I, I suppose that the reason is you mix messages, your, your schools are open, but you're sending the Max Museum people and other uh, staff home. If it's not here, is there any need to do that at this stage? Well, in relation, in relation to the Manx Museum and the National Heritage, um, there's no visitors, Paul, as such. Um, to, so, you know, we, we, what is the point in running services um, that people aren't going Nothing to else. generally be <laughs> using? Right, do, do any of our colleagues yeah. you wish to, to, to comment on this, Gregor? Um, I, well, I'm, I'm not sure it's necessarily helpful to say whether I think it's here or not. We can only go on, on what we know. And what we know is, of all the ones we've tested so far, we don't have a positive result. Yeah. And that's why we are continuing testing. Because, you know, we, we took a shift from uh, Public Health England in uh, continuing to do community testing just to see. Because for an island of our size, we would like to know what's the trend. If it emerges, where does it emerge? And um, how does it spread? So that's why um, we continue with uh, our testing regime. So hopefully, you know, uh, they remain negative. Right, before I bring in, in, in Tim, I'd just like to, to say there's been an awful lot of armchair experts saying it is on the island, which I think is absolutely disgraceful, where we know the, the people that are being tested, they've been isolated, um, tests have come back saying, no, it, it's negative, they haven't got it, but experts are going around putting on Facebook, it's definitely here, etc., etc. It is absolute garbage. And if people consistently carry on putting misleading, incorrect information on social media, I will take action against them. Um, Tim. Yeah, um, just want to pick up obviously on the, the, the medical supplies uh, release that we had today where you're asking people obviously not to stockpile because are we, are we seeing a similar thing to what we've been seeing in the supermarkets where people are stockpiling drugs but more about the messaging we're getting uh, a little bit from government because we're being told to practice good hygiene, to practice social distancing and yet you were saying yesterday, go and have a meal out, go to the pub. The meal's out, the options are diminishing day by day, as are pubs, because they're closing. Well, if I can pick up on the drugs point, first of all, Tim, in relation to the, in relation to the drugs, yes, we have seen evidence of people trying to stockpile drugs, which is completely and utterly unnecessary. It's uncalled for. Um, that in itself will cause the problems in the supply route, as the press release stated this morning. We have also had people trying to get hold of their GP surgeries to order much higher quantities than they would normally get. I need to make it absolutely abundantly clear that there is no point in people doing that because the GPs will not be prescribing larger quantities. Um, so there is absolutely no point in people attempting that route in the first place. But again, it is exceptionally disappointing. And just as we've mentioned at previous press conferences with the other stockpiling, it is completely socially irresponsible as well because the people you are actually damaging are the people that those same people who are stockpiling are going onto social media and saying they want to protect. Okay, Alex. Sorry, only the social distance. No, no, a Alex, we'll come back to you, Tim. Yeah, just going back to the powers to prosecute that you've laid out there, uh, you mentioned community reporting is going to be encouraged. Are there any plans to actively police who's doing what? So any active patrols that are going to be going on? Well, that's being worked up at the moment. Obviously, we've only just got these powers. We would hope that all people will take this incredibly seriously because the penalties, if you don't take it seriously, are up to £10,000 or three months in prison if you abuse this situation. So that should be enough of a deterrent because it will happen if you're, if you're caught. Uh, if we see instances of, of people breaking it, we'll, we'll go after them. So we will, if we feel there's a need to implement more measures, then, then we will. But we just hope people will be sensible. At the end of the day, if you go out when you're self-isolating and you inadvertently spread this disease to vulnerable people, you could be responsible for their death. So 
we would hope that all people, we, we, we haven't invented this social isolation just for uh, the, the sake of it. This is done with a specific you know, reason to stop this spreading around the island. So if you're going to be irresponsible, we will come after you. Um, but I have every confidence that the people of the Isle of Man will take this seriously and will abide by the rules. Um, Jess. Um, Health Minister, you touched upon this, um, frontline st staff, and I want to revisit my question from yesterday, um, and that is, are NHS staff members being tested as a matter of priority, considering they will be in contact with people and patients? In terms of individual testing of staff members, no, they're not. And the reason being is there is there is absolutely no point in that, as has been shown in other jurisdictions around the world, because someone may be tested on the Monday, but could come into contact with someone who's infected on the Wednesday, uh, the test would come back negative. So testing in the community is for those, and testing is for those that are displaying symptoms. If workers come forward and are displaying symptoms, then obviously we would look to, we would seek to test them as well as remove them from their role. Okay. Uh, so, actually, can I, can I, can I bring yes, I yes. think I, I would second that. Basically, this uh, because if they are symptomatic, they would be treated as any other person, you know, because they are healthcare workers. They are in contact with the vulnerable patients. If they are symptomatic, they will be tested and isolated. Um, well, at Isle of Man newspapers, we understand that several nurses are self-isolating and waiting for tests. So, when will these be completed? They will, they will be completed in line with the triage system. We will look at all the different people who require testing and they're going to be triaged accordingly. Okay, Do you have okay. A Mark next. Chief Minister, are we in a state of national emergency now? Well, we, ha we haven't got it. We're, we're planning for it. There are no cases of coronavirus on the Isle of Man, but we have to be sensible and prepare for it. And that's what we're doing. So. Your interpretation is, is, is how you want to take it. I, I think preparing the Isle of Man for the worst to ensure that we've got everything ready to go is, is responsible and, and important. So, yes, this is a, a, a significant threat facing not just the Isle of Man, but all of mankind, and we need to treat it sensibly. Tim, you were next, and then Paul. Well, repeat the question I asked from earlier about social distancing, about good hygiene. Uh, some of our listeners were confused by your statement uh, yesterday, Chief Minister, about go out and have a meal, go out and have a drink, and saying that that was a confusing message. Which is it? And we're losing pubs anyway. They're, they're locking their doors. They've got no business. Well, I, I didn't say... Um I said, clearly, you can go out to the pub, you can go out to um, restaurants, just be sensible, do the, the two metre distancing, wash your hands, uh, you, you know, it's, we have no cases on the Isle of Man at the moment, and the sensible precautions for people who don't have um, medical um, problems where they could be at, at a greater risk, and, and the age and, and pregnant women, those are, are, are more than acceptable at this moment in time, but who knows going forward if we have significant outbreaks on the other But those, those people have got nothing to go and look at anyway now. We go back to the Manx well, National Heritage Well, I went sites. out for a meal yesterday, um, just very briefly I hasten to add, but restaurants are open. Yes, some are shutting down, but we, we should be supporting local. David, do you want yeah, to If I can comment, that? local businesses are open for business, the restaurants and pubs. Um, in, ter in terms... Yes, can I interrupt him? If you keep on saying... Some are closing. You're talking down the industry already. We are not saying not to go out for a meal. We are just saying be sensible. And there are still I'm pointing out, though, that open. there are pubs closing. The Treasury Minister has just said that he was in here before. This is a massive, massive economic catastrophe, the island. Could it be is, facing. but there are still other businesses open, and we should all be supporting those businesses at this moment in time. If, if, I, if I can just make the point, there are restaurants, there are pubs open, and as the Chief Minister has emphasised at several press conferences now, it's about be people being sensible about it. So people in different situations will potentially do different things. So we've given the social distancing advice around pregnant women and vulnerable groups. The decision they make might be very different to an 18-year-old young person who's, who's on the island. People need to make their own decisions in that. We have not shut down the pubs and clubs. They are open for business and they are free in there for people to use. 
Okay, Paul. Yeah, I got, kind of follows on from that. You, you own, the government owns the theatre, the Villa Marina cinema. You can't you're not asking people to socially exclude themselves at one metre there, are you? I mean, they're still open. I mean, there's a lot of people putting on shows that are coming up and they're probably very worried about can they go on with those. Mm -hmm. um, as a government, do you not need to make that decision to either shut the villa, shut the, the cinema, I don't know, the, the wildlife park, whatever, lead by example, or are you happy that people can sit that close? I mean, in theatres, they are really, and in cinema, they're really, really close to each other. Is this a mixed message, maybe, or, or is there an answer to that? There's a very simple answer, Paul, which is all of these questions are focusing as if we've already had an outbreak on the island and there's human-to-human -human transmission occurring radically around our community. That is not the case. People are comparing the decisions being made here to the decisions being made in the UK. The UK is in a very different fundamental situation and has had to take absolutely drastic level to try and cut down the human-to-human -human transmission in the community. We, thankfully, here in the island are not at that stage. We have no confirmed cases. So all we are saying to people is they need to take into account their personal circumstances and make sensible decisions around that. So we have laid out the recommendations of social distancing for those groups and how social distancing works. But what we are saying is we do not need to shut down absolutely everything because we are not at that stage. These are the questions that you should really be asking us if there is human to human transmission in the community, not at this point in time. Chris. Thank you. Uh, we heard on the Breakfast Show on Next Radio this morning for a, uh, a number of healthcare professionals who are telling us they don't have enough of the most basic PPE, personal protection equipment, uh, the N95 masks, uh, overalls, that sort of thing. Is there a supply? a problem with the supply chain on the island. I'll bring Gregor in a minute, if you... Oh, no, sorry. No, you're not involved. But, um, I'll bring... Sorry, Rishwan in. in first, moment. there are certain guidelines that Public Health England has recommended what to use in what situation. You mentioned N95 uh, or FFP3 mask. This mask is only uh, recommended for use when you have to do a procedure that is called aerosol generating procedure, like in ITU, intubation, um, very close to the patient, and there is some aerosol generated. That's where you, you would use FFP3 mask. Or in situations like emergency department, where you, so there are very, you know, few situations where would, you would need this FFP3 mask. In, under most circumstances, uh, our normal standard surgical mask should do. So, as you can see, you know, in England, everywhere in the world, you know, these things, you know, the PPE uh, is a large demand. We have uh, uh, enough store, uh, stores of FFP3 and other uh, PPE, and we have a constant supply coming in. It's not in huge bulks. It, ha it is more like ration now because other hospitals and other trusts do need them. So there is a steady trickle of stuff to keep our uh, uh, stores going. And okay. a question just for the, the two doctors before I just uh, sort of hand that microphone on. We're in a position at the moment where COVID-19 testing is happening across the way. Uh, the results then come back. From a doctor's perspective, would it be better if those tests were to be done on the island? Would there be any gain to be had by that? And if there is, is there a plan for that to happen? Right. COVID-19 tests at the moment are done by Public Health England laboratories. There are five or six laboratories across the UK. The nearest laboratory to us is Manchester. We are sending all our tests to Manchester. At the moment, there are lots of commercially available kits uh, across uh, the UK, but they are not evaluated or validated by Public Health England. So what we are doing is, as soon as we get some validation and a recommendation from Public Health England, we will bring uh, the test in-house. So uh, it may not be too far away. Okay, right, we've got Ron and then Mark and then we'll call it a day, I think. It's a quite a similar question really with regard to the supply chain. Uh, as, it, as the situation may escalate and we all hope that it doesn't, but do we have enough testing kits on the island and is there a, um, is there a supply see, chain for them? Uh, there is a difference between testing kit and swabs. We need swabs to collect the specimen and the swabs then go to Manchester. So um, 
at the moment we are you know okay but obviously we need to keep uh, you know uh, 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 you know our, our, our storage needs to be kept up to date so there is as i say there is a steady trickle but there is no big bulk coming into the hospital and as you would expect everybody needs them okay mark uh, Minister Ashford, you said the other day about uh, the test was took took about 72 hours. Um, has that length of time increased? And probably a question to the doctors, I don't know, but yeah. how long are the tests taken to come back before it can be announced that there's been a com if there is a confirmation? Yes, it takes. Uh, it uh, it was 48 hours turnaround time. But as you can expect, there is, uh, Manchester is inundated with uh, uh, testing, you see. So there is a huge workload they are doing. They may be running 500 tests a day from across the region. So uh, the turnaround time then again depends upon their workload. So for us, it's between 48 hours to 72 hours. Okay, well, thank you all very much. We've had a number of questions. We will be here tomorrow to answer more questions and give you more updates. Thank you all very much.